One of my friends said this, but I found myself agreeing. Um, currently, like presently, I, I'm no longer concerned about whether God exists, but what kind of God exists. And there's all these images for God in the New Testament and the Old Testament, and we can never quite separate any of them from one another. But I feel like if God is love, um, Jean Vanier, the philosopher and theologian, says if God is love, then God is terribly vulnerable. <laughs> and I think his words have helped guide my thought in in currently like being in a place of so much pain here that's often not as visible as say um, like Columbus or Cincinnati in the city but it's very much there up in the hills and in the hollers um, is thinking about the vulnerability of God it's been completely destroyed what I what I what I what I thought and believed and followed and preached uh, before moving down here is nothing what I believe and teach and preach now. What did you used to think believe in? Um, I guess there was a lot of emphasis on um, making sure that people had salvation or um, that there was a certain thing that you shared with people that it wasn't about leaving your comfort zone of suburbia and leaving this comfort zone of this great church that you go to every Sunday and that's your interaction and it ends on Sunday and then next Sunday you're there and so people see you and see what you put on and they see uh, the person that you bring on Sunday morning and the outfit and see nothing of your life from Sunday to Sunday um, which has been a, a huge difference is that, that living in community here is that people see you and all your shit and it's it's Sunday through Sunday not just Sunday through Sunday um, and you depend on them and we need each other and we need each other not only for um, safety and security but for material things for sharing whatever we have with each other um, which is a great model and a model that I don't see replicated very often uh, but a model that makes sense to me I think that um there are many ways to, to experience God. Um, and I think having a, a close group of friends that you can call family and community um, is one of those ways. And one of the same reasons that I you know, deeply value church, and my, my home at St. John's, same reason that I value Franklin and PsychoWorks. It's about the community and the connections and um, the giving and sharing that takes place within those relationships. Um, and for me, that is evidence of God um, and uh, a life, I don't know, you know, being enriched by God. Uh, there's a part of it that is, um, there's nothing secret. <laughs> there's, there's not much that you can hide. and. Um, and in a neighborhood like this too, I guess when I, my, I guess my vision is that be a, at, at church people come on Sundays and there's a, an aspect of their lives that you see and that, and that's important. No, I'm not saying that's not important. It is, but there's a lot in between that. Um, that is your life and your walk with God, as some people may say, or your spirituality or what you struggle with or. So those relationships on a day-to-day -day basis is less about um, putting on a show and more about just being honest and real with people about what you struggle with and what you believe or don't believe and working through that together. And that's something that we've been able to do while we all, I would say, came down here with the same um, ideology, the same mentality religiously, that this, this was our purpose. Uh, now you look at the 20 some odd of us and some people attend a church, some people have no interest in that. Uh, some people want an alternative church and we've just, I guess in the end, come to support and love each other. And so whatever each other needs is what will help you do uh, and support you doing, which is very different in other intentional communities, whereas normally there's a formula. We do this, we do X, Y, and Z. Uh, and I've really found God in that and just being us and allowing and loving each other 
and ourselves through that and having the support to do that. Like the most genuine, I guess what I've found since living down here is that uh, a far more genuine faith and understanding and belief of God. It's a really hard place right now. It's just that all of my building up, I feel like I've done in the past four years of the, the, like theology and all my reading and everything. Right now, I'm at a place um, where I just that it doesn't matter. It's it's more of a relationship with people, and and the cobbling together with meaning through the people like in this house in this household and on our experiences, let alone the experiences we've had in the broader community are teaching me more about um, more about what it means to try to love God and that's just that's not very comforting in a lot of ways sometimes there's just realizing that the habits of relationship um, are are often much different than the habits and the structures of, of the church and I'm really having a hard time trying to um, and that the habits that are formed in a household, I feel, are more, for me now, more genuine and more, just like the PG-13 are, are more um, honest and have, are creating more space and time for relationship, oftentimes, than in the ways that, that we have have set up the habits and, and through the liturgies and the work of church. I feel like you're more able to trust one another through the relationships of the household in my life. And those moments are more spiritual and more have more meaning and more visibility of God than in the the kind of um, in the, the interactions and in, in, in the structures of the church. It's really hard. I don't know what to do with that. I think the lesson that's been most impressed upon me recently is that um, the work of God is um, there's an element of consistency. And commitment um, that you know I couldn't have really begin begun to imagine when I was in college um, so I'm still like you know I'm uh, like six years out of college at this point but still close enough that I can kind of reflect on the idealism of, of my college years um, and and now I understand that it's it's much more about the the day in the day out it's not always as um, glamorous but um, I have found working in the bike shop to be very fulfilling. Um, and whereas it kind of began as a project of myself and some other people, it's really expanded way beyond that now into something that I'm just a part of. Um, and a lot of time just trying to keep up with. Um, and I think that's been uh, the most rewarding thing is that um, the bike shop has gone beyond myself and the other sort of founders and it's it's gaining a, a life and a momentum all of its own and I really think that is um, maybe the the payoff or something that's you know where God's work can is really like being seen at least in, in my life my perspective a few years ago we um had the opportunity to plant this four acre field that somebody let us let us grow in and um, it, it was a huge opportunity I mean we were able to grow so much more more food and we put in an acre of, of beans um, and we planted it and we we got out there and we hoed that field time and time again and it would take all of us you know 11 of us out there in the field in the heat of the day in a field that has no shade um, hoeing away, getting these beans done, and it's, it's, it's like stories about painting the Golden Gate Bridge. As soon as we finished, we'd have to go around and start where we started again and do it all over again. And um, what happened was is that uh, we had a, a pretty bad drought, and it affected all those beans. And then, um, and then a whole bunch of other things came up that we got really busy with, and the weeds eventually won out. Uh, and when it was harvest time, uh, the deer decided to come in and ate most of the spindly crop that was, was left. And so we were left with an overwhelming sense of failure. <laughs> and, and when I share about our work here, you know, I get to share about a lot of really great things, great relationships, um, being able to hear from what so many people are seeking and, and find meaning in that. 
uh, I get to share the Eucharist with so many, many, many people that come out to the farm for our farm Eucharist. But at the same time, I come back time and time again to all the ways in which we've we failed at things, which we could have done better with relationships, that we could have done better to grow a crop. Um, and it's tempting to read into uh, you know, parables like the parable of the sower and think that your, your role is to be the sower. Um, but it's not. That's 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 God's role, and and so for us, the ways of God that we kind of continue to come back to are our job is to cultivate the good soil, to build up the good soil for for that that seed to find a receptive home, and building up good soil is slow work. I mean, uh, soil scientists say that. Um, takes a hundred years to, to make one inch of topsoil and topsoil is the stuff that really grows your your plants um, building soil is long slow hard work that can be done undone in an instant in just the way that our topsoil all over the country is undone um, by bad farming practices that allow the wind to take it up or by excavation that just pushes it aside good topsoil can be be taken out as easy as a, uh, a tragedy of a child dying or a divorce or something that tears the fabric of a community. I mean, and so that's our role here is to build up good soil and to brace ourselves against the things that come our way that, that want to, to tear that work down. And I think, I think that's the, the ways of God is, is that long, slow work of, of building that up and preparing good ground for the seed and, and um, what happens with that, what, what fruit that bears from that, um, we're, we're a small part of, but we've got every day to, to give ourselves to it and, and, and do our best to um, prepare the ground, prepare the soil. So that's, that's my best answer for that tough question. <laughs> I think, I guess like the ways of God, I, you have to have a lot of patience <laughs> when you work on the farm and you have to have a lot of faith like or trust or you know whatever you want to call it like I don't know everything is so uh, subject to change like even our interview today like it was gonna rain you know you have to be like oh we gotta wait till after the rain and then you have to you know you have to hope that the rain will stop and the sun will come out and the ground will dry so you can cultivate but then it'll rain again it's interesting uh, my my background includes EFM mentoring and theological reflection. So I, I often start with, this is what we believe, therefore this is what we do. But in thinking about your questions before I came here, I realized that in the case of fair trade, it started with, this is what we do, and it grew into what I believe. And I'll give you a, a quick story. My grandfather was from Peru. He was born in Peru. And so at one point when I was a child, he was taking me on a ship down to Peru to visit with relatives. And we were in Ecuador and he took my hand and we were in the port and we went out onto the, these dusty streets and there were beggar children. And I was probably eight years old and he gave them all coins. And it was kind of scary, but my grandfather was there and it was smelly and some of the children had, had you know skin diseases and things that, that would be memorable to an eight-year-old, because they are very empathetic. And afterwards, he said to me, you know, these are the lucky ones. And I didn't understand. And he said, the children that can make it to the port can collect money that's, that's given to them. But there are many more children out in the mountains who can't make it to the port and they needed as much or more. So you have to look for the people who help the people you can't see. And we went back on the ship and had a lovely dinner and, and you know, it, it, was, it was a fabulous family experience, but that story always stuck with me. And when I started visiting Global Village, I realized there's this huge network of people who are out there reaching the people we can't see and when I think about the baptismal vow of seeking and serving Christ in all persons, that's what this is. 
and it's beyond what I can reach, but I know my little piece of it being president and making sure the store stays afloat is, is doing good in that way as well. I guess this sort of relates, maybe not the ways of God or like you can put a, put a word to it, but a lot of times I'll, I'll take things to market or, you know, someone will come look at the farm and they'll be like, oh my gosh, you're doing such a good job. Or like, look at that Napa cabbage is so beautiful, whatever. And I'm just like, I didn't really do anything. Like I just put it in the ground and it ended up like this. So it's more like, I don't know like what the right word is to associate with that, but that idea that everything is doing, it's doing its own thing. Like I don't make it grow, you know, I just, I put it in the ground and it's suddenly the corn has tassels, you know, or the tomato is red and I don't do it. I don't, I help it, you know, I, I try not to let it die, but I don't make it happen either. Uh -huh. So I don't know like, yeah, like what word you associate with that, but I feel like I always see God when I see things like that, when I realize 